Okay, so now everybody knows how to buy food, prepare food. We're all set with that. Any questions on those things? No, good. We're gonna get down into the food styling. When you're gonna style a shot, the first thing you have to think about is what do you wanna show in the shot? Are you just gonna do an isolation? Do you wanna show it as a, um, a shot of a specific item, such as a spice or an herb or something like that? Uh, do you wanna do a dinner type of a setting? Do you wanna do a restaurant type of a setting? Uh, do you wanna shoot something individual or do you want to have uh, something in the background uh, for uh, you know, some ambiance or, or to, to fill the frame. You have to decide what you want to shoot Okay, first. When you style a shot, what you have to do is don't overstyle. What happens with a lot of people when they get into styling is they will take little things and they will place them absolutely perfectly somewhere. Say they have like a um, a chicken salad that they're doing and maybe they have some celery in it they will take the celery and place it here and place it there what happens then it looks phony it looks arranged it's overstyled. for the guys it's kind of I don't know it, also older guys remember the times when we used to go to the barber we'd say I want you to give me a haircut but don't make it look like I got a haircut that's what you want your styling to do. You want it to be styled, but you don't want it to look styled. You want it to look natural. You want it to look inviting. So don't become really, really, really precise with the things you don't need to be precise with. Okay? If you're going to be doing a sauce, okay, make sure a sauce, a dressing, a garnish, what they should do is they should enhance the food item and not overwhelm it. Say you're gonna do a shot of a pork chop, okay? Nice southern pork chop, smothered in gravy and everything. If you're doing it, at, if you're buying it at a diner, yeah, what happens? You, you get the pork chop and you know, the lady behind with the, the hairnet thing in her hair, you know, pours about a gallon and a half of sauce over it and you don't know, you got like mystery meat underneath. You have no idea what's underneath that. When you're selling a food shot, what are you selling? If you're, if you're shooting a pork chop, what are you selling? The pork chop. You're not selling the sauce. So what you do is you use the sauce as an enhancement. You just nap it. A little thing, nap, a famous French word, which is basically put a little bit you know, on it. So it, it, it fits with what you're showing. Dressing a salad. If you're doing a salad, don't take a bunch of dressing and just you know, dump it on because what is going to happen is you're going to deal with two problems. The first problem is that it's going to have too much liquid on it and your highlights are going to get way over the top. Everything's just going to be glistening and you're not going to be able to really see what you want to see. So the best way to do it is you go light and what I do is I take, I don't even put the salad in the bowl first, I'll take the dressing and I'll pour a little bit around the edge of the bowl. Then I'll put the salad in, the greens in, and then I'll toss it lightly. And you just get a light coating on it because you don't want it to flood it. And then the other thing it doesn't do, if you have a lighter um, dressing on it, it's not going to weigh it down. Okay? And there's nothing worse than a weighed down salad. Now, here's a little tip. Can somebody hand me a plate and hand me my little half styrofoam ball? There we go. Food photography is the land of illusion, pure and simple. You want to make something look like something, but you can't really do it naturally. So you've got to find a way around it. So let's say you're doing a salad, and over time what happens is salad it does not have much support. It's going to go flat. So how can you make your salad look like it has volume? And these, the proportions are a little off on here. I couldn't carry everything from my host. You go to Michael's or some, you know, craft shop, and you buy these, okay? Cut them in, get them different sizes. What you would do is you would take your plate that you're going to put the salad on, put it down. Put that there. Now put your salad on top of this. So what have you done? You've made a structure. The structure will now hold the salad up. Then you could take it and, you know, arrange it a little bit 
to make it look natural. Fire, fire. You can do that. You can also do it if somebody could hand me that rectangular bowl there, that one right there, Jane, and then hand me one of those littler bowls. No, that, that's a little, uh, right behind you. There should be a bowl behind you, all the way behind, right by the peppers. That's fine. No, that's fine. That'll be perfect. <laughs> Just say you're doing a soup, say like a chicken tortilla soup. And what you want to do is, this is where styling a shot comes in. You don't just want to pour the soup and have a bunch of liquid in a bowl and go click. Okay, what's that? That's taking a picture of some food. What you want to do is you want to make it enticing. You want to let the viewer know what that soup is. If you take a chicken tortilla soup and you put it in a bowl and you put somebody look at, have somebody look at it and you say, what type of soup is it? How the hell do I know? I can't see what's in it. Now, if you have a tomato soup or something like that, that's a different story. So what you want to do is let the viewer know what it is by sight without telling them what it is. So a lot of things will not float in a liquid. You put strips of chicken and tortilla in a liquid, what's going to happen? Bloop, they go right to the bottom. You can't see them. So what do you have to do? You improvise, overcome, and adapt. You take another bowl smaller than this bowl, okay? And this isn't exactly it, but you put it in upside down, okay? Making sure that the top of the little bowl here is below where your soup line is gonna be, okay? Put your soup in, then what you do is you rest your chicken, a little, some chicken, some tortilla strips on top of it. So what is it doing is it's actually resting on this. So now the person looks at the shot, what are they seeing? They're seeing a soup, but they're seeing chicken, they're seeing tortilla. What are they eating? Chicken tortilla soup. It's all visual. It's how you style the shot, okay? It's the same thing with, uh, if you want to do a tomato, you want to do a tomato bisque, okay? You just might not want to have the liquid in there, so you get some chopped up Roma tomatoes or something like that, and you put them on top, okay? Maybe add a little garnish of uh, pea sprouts. Okay, but again, what should a garnish in a sauce do? It should enhance, not overwhelm. So if you're putting a little garnish on, don't throw 12 pounds of parsley or something on it. Do just a little bit. And I'm going to show you later how to do some um, garnishes that just make a shot go wow. One of them is by taking a simple radish. And you cut it a certain way, and then you turn it flat, and you do a real fine, what's called chiffonade. Okay, real fine cuts. And when you're done with it and you separate them, what you do is you have a white center, but the ends are tipped in red from the skin of the radish. And you take that and you put that like on top of the scallop or put that on, on top of something else, you know, a piece of fish, something like that. It's these little styling touches that elevate your shot, okay? And it's where the finesse comes in. Learn how to finesse what you're doing with your shots. Learn how to engineer. It's, this, all this is nothing more than reverse engineering something. You have to get to point X, how do you get there? You gotta do this, 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 and this, and you'll get there, okay? With a the glaze. Then I made some uh, uh, raspberry cream cheese turnovers. Mm -hmm. And those ones I sprinkled with cinnamon and put chocolate stripes on mm -hmm. it. Those always went before the end of the Why? People look at them and them. <laughs> it elicits a visceral response. And that's what you're doing with food photography. You are eliciting a, a visceral response by just the eyes. That's why the details are very important. If you don't have those details, you're not going to get that response out of somebody. They're going to go, bowl of soup, it's a scallop. But you put that little detail on it. Now they go, whew, that's nice. I want that. Okay. Now, I've talked about before the building of the shot and the shot within the shot. 
if you walk away with anything, walk away learning this. When you set up a shot, th there's times before I will even shoot something, what I do is this. I will sit there and I will come over here, and this is my palette, and I will just do this. And I'll look. What am I doing? I'm visualizing what I want to do. In my head, I'm coming up with how I want the main shot to be styled, how I want it to look. I'm getting it all set in my head. Once I have it set in my head, what I'm doing then is now I'm planning out timing. Is there anything timing critical to this shot? If there is, I have to plan for it. If it's something that's going to be like ice cream or something frozen, I have to have that in my head. Here's another little trick on how detailed I get. You're going to do an ice cream shot, okay? So you, you want to get the right scoop. Now years back, what we used to do is we used to take powdered sugar, corn syrup, and we would mix it all together. And we would also add lard to it, what is I, as Lauren likes me to call it, melted pig. And what it would do is we would make ice cream. That would be ice cream back in the day. You can't do that any longer because of truth and advertising laws. If you're, taking, if you're showing ice cream, you have to show real ice cream. So it's critical with timing. So you go, okay, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna scoop these things out and I'm gonna get the perfect scoop and I'm gonna put it on a sheet tray or something and put it in the freezer. Sounds kind of good, but what happens when you put cold ice cream on a room temperature sheet pan? What happens? The bottom parts of it melts. You have now lost your perfect scoop. So how do you fix it? Improvise, overcome, and adapt. You freeze the sheet, the sheet pan. So now you can take it and put it on there and never, ever, 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 if you're working with an ice cream scoop shot, have one scoop to work with. You're asking to put a bullet in your head because you're going to want to kill yourself because you're going to have the greatest looking shot coming and it's going to go And once it's gone, you got ice cream soup. Okay? So plan it out. I usually have about 30 set to go. When you're planning the shots out, first thing you want to think about is the shot within the shot. And as I've explained before, the shot within the shot is looking at the overall view of something and getting the overall shot. Then learning to go inward and to get another shot. You do that by not only moving in, but by moving up, by moving down, moving left, or moving right. Once you get that next shot, then go in deeper and repeat the process. Once you have done all of that, then what you do is you can start what's called building the shot. So if you have, you're doing a pasta shot, you can have the pasta there, you get the nice shot of that. You've done your different shots, your close-ups, and all your different angles. Now come back, pull back out again, and what you do is you add a nice basket in the, in the back of crusty bread. Perhaps put a piece of the crusty bread on the plate. Get those shots. Do your shot within the shot with that. Pull back again. Add maybe another bowl of pasta in the background. Go back, do your overall, get in closer, get in closer, do your shot within the shot for that. Add a bottle of wine, add a glass, add a fork, add something. Keep repeating it. You can shoot the crap out of one setup. You will have more shots than you ever dreamed possible. Like I said, from any basic shot, you should walk away with a minimum of a dozen shots. Don't just sit there and stand there and put it out there and I'm gonna do this, and you put it down there, and you stand at 45 degrees, and you shoot it. I'm done. What have you done? You've taken a picture of some food. You haven't done food photography. So always get these things straight in your mind. Now as you're doing this, did anybody, did all you people think that food photography wasn't quite as detailed as you know, you're finding out that it was? The one thing that everybody says to me when they take my class is, gee, many Christmas. I never knew it was like this. But if you want to do it well, it is. Um, now you come down to timing. Timing is very critical with these things, and sometimes it's very specific. If you're doing proteins, a lot of times you don't want to leave it sit there. Why? Because as proteins sit and cool, 
any of the fat that's within it kind of gelatinizes, becomes thick, it becomes gloppy, it loses its look. Okay? So you want to do them fairly quickly. Um, get your shot in your lighting set. If you're going to be doing um, a shot of something, what you'll do is you'll come in here and you'll put this here and you'll do like a dummy setup. Okay? And this is going to be where your main thing is going to be. And then you're going to have something back here and you're going to put something over here. And once you get everything set with the shot, what you do is you go over there and you take a test shot. You haven't brought out the good food yet. You've had, you had dummy pieces in here. You check your lighting. Are there deep, dark shadows? Food can cause black holes because of the little nooks and crannies. Are they properly filled? Don't always think you have to fill every shadow. You don't. What do shadows give you? Shadows give you dimension. They give you that 3D look. If you just shoot nothing, no shadows, what happens? A three-dimensional object turns into a two-dimensional object. It looks flat. Don't have them too deep, though. Okay? Make sure they look right. Make sure your exposure is right. Make sure everything is sitting to where it's supposed to be. Then once you're all set and you've got your test shots done, then what you do is you bring in what's called the hero. The hero is the food or whatever you're shooting. You put it in, you get your shots. If you're doing ice cream or something time sensitive, after you get your first couple of shots, take it out, get it away. That's why you need spares. Bring the next one in. Do your next shot within the shot or building the shot with that. Okay? This is all the timing, where the timing comes in. The different tools that you can use um, that will help you style. That little box there uh, with the modeling clay, can you hand me that, please? This is one of the best items that you can buy. Costs you a couple of bucks. It's nothing but modeling clay. This modeling clay is four years old. And feel it. It's still pliable. Yeah. It does not harden. You can still move it. You can still ply it. A lot of times what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to come up with um, a way of elevating something a little bit. A lot of times when you're taking a shot, you don't want to shoot across um, a flat plane like this, where the dish is just sitting here like this, okay? Because a lot of times you can't see everything that's on the plate because things are going to be covering it up. So what you can do is a little bit of modeling clay, okay? Make a ball out of it. Lift this up, put that down, press that like that. You have now elevated the back of the plate. What happens when you shoot that? Now you can visually see more back here and it's not hidden by something. You can't see what's down there. So you've improved your shot without ever knowing about it. I actually wish I knew about that. If you don't have modeling clay, find something else. Stick something underneath there, a book of matches. Yeah, rock can be fine. You, this is where the subtleties and the details come in. Now, if you did something like this, that looks stupid. But if you take a piece of it and you do that, it's very subtle. No, no. It all depends, again, on your shot and how you're visioning it. Say I'm doing a shot of a steak, okay? And behind here, I have a couple of pieces of asparagus. If I shoot this thing flat, okay, how am I going to let the people know that I got, you know, the asparagus back here without just showing the, you know, the two little ends coming out unless I get up and above it? But if I raise it a little bit, okay, and I lower my angle, what happens? Now I can see you can see like one of the stalks of the asparagus in the background. It visually draws the eye and tells the viewer what they're looking at. Well, in that particular 